Good morning. It's good to be with you in worship today. I'm Alicia Besser, and it's a privilege to lead this service. Uh, it's an exciting week in the life of the church. This week begins Vacation Bible School. Woohoo! We're excited about it. Uh, you'll see the decorations are starting to go up. Next week, this place will look like Vacation Bible School exploded. And I'll just give a shout out to Joey Brownlee, who's back there. She's leading the charge for decorations. And so, yay! She does a great job. And we are, uh, it's gonna be a wonderful week. I know that we have a number of announcements on the screen, but I do want to draw your attention to our Connect card. If you are a member or a visitor alike, please fill this out at the bottom. You can check off for more information. It's never too late to sign up for Vacation Bible School. Let me give you a shout out. We have. Well, we have enough volunteers for the kids, but we could always use more. So if you're thinking you might want to help, there's still room for you, but we're grateful to God for raising up all the leaders we need for this week. But you can rip off this Connect card, put it in the offering plate as it comes past you. You'll see on the reverse side, there's a prayer card. If you would like to share something that we could pray with you about this week, just write that down and we'll be happy to add it to our prayer list. Now let's see what's happening in the life of the church. Pray for me. 
pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Hi, Nicola. I'm Zoe. How would you like to pray for me this coming school year? Or a kid just like me? Like us! Well, you can. This August, you can commit to pray for a child that goes to our church. It's only for a year. Then you can get a new kid next year. Need a little more help making up prayers? Buy one of these. It will teach you. And as you know, practice makes perfect. Parents, please sign up your children. Who can receive prayer? 24 years old and younger. Baby's on the way too. Adult, please sign up to be a prayer champion. 18 years old and older. And older. And older. And older. Register today at moody.org slash register. Okay, okay, yeah. Hey, right. oh, Jenny, Jenny, come on, come over here. Yeah. This is the new musical that we're doing this time. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. And that reminds me, do you know what it means to be called? Is it, call me, online, call, call, call me, call me, any, any time, call me. Yeah, okay, well, that's, I, I love Blotty, but that's not it, that's not it. Oh. Here's my number, call me maybe, hey, I just uh, looked back. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, no, that's not that, good, <sighs> good, yes, I mean, you know, you're, you're on the right track. Okay. I just called. To, to say, say I, I love you. you. Yeah, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Just... Stevie, I love Stevie Wonder, but that's still, still on the wrong track. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So maybe a different type of call. Sue. Uh, no, that's, that's, you know, good guesses, and I like all those, but, but basically, here's a, here's, a, here's a hint for you. Uh, in Ephesians, it says that we should live lives worthy of the calling that we have been given or that we have received. And this musical, entitled Called by Mark Burroughs, uh, affirms that God has, has placed something beautiful in each and every one of us and that we are called to share it with the world. That makes a whole lot more sense. Everybody's going to want to be involved. When Absolutely. is it? Absolutely. Well, it's August 1st through the 5th. These are the rehearsals. 6 to 8.30 in the evening. Do we get snacks? Oh, yes. Snacks abound. And then August 6th, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to uh, noon. And then the, we present it to the church on Sunday morning, August 7th at 11 a.m. in the bridge. Great. So who can be involved? Oh, this is great. Anyone going into the second grade all the way up through 12th grade, we always have a great time together. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. So what do they need to wear? Actually, you get a free T-shirt. <laughs> Yay! So we'll see you on August 1st. And don't forget to register at moody.org slash register. Worthy, I will live my life worthy, worthy of the calling I have received. Worthy, I will live my life worthy, worthy of the calling I have received. And on that note, let's stand and join in the call to worship. Oh, great God, who are you? Oh, great God, show yourself to us in this place at this time. We are here because we want to know you more fully.
any requests this morning? 242. You have to say it louder. Two six oh two zero six two. Yes, okay, that's in the black book. Sing stanzas one and three. Let's sing stanzas one and four. Seven four. Let's 
Let's sing stanzas one and three. kids to come down for children's time. Do we have any kids that want to come down? Come on down. Come on down, Quentin and Foster. Come on down, Ariel. All right. I'm so glad to see y'all. I know. Are y'all getting excited about Vacation Bible School? Yes. I am too. This room is going to be filled with people all week long. Can you imagine? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people here. You know how many kids are registered so far? This is the last number I heard. Can you guess how many kids are registered to come to Vacation Bible School? I know you are. How many? Ten. How many do you think? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. How many do you think? One hundred and two. How about over a hundred and thirty kids? That's a lot of kids going to be here today. That's a big crowd. Today in our scripture lesson, we are talking about a really big crowd. Now, you, I know at least two of you, you might have been here too, Christmas Eve, when this place is packed out, there's like 500 people. Imagine the crowd following Jesus is 10 times that. I mean, it's a lot of people, and they want to see Jesus perform miracles, and they want to hear his teachings. They are so amazed that they are just following him. They're just marching wherever they go. And one day, Jesus was trying to get away. He was trying to get a little quiet time. He was trying to get some rest. But they kept following. And he saw them. He'd gone up on a mountain. And he saw them coming his way. And he thought, mm, we got a situation here where there are people, there are hungry bellies. Now, what happens, have y'all ever had days where you've played and played and played and you forgot to eat? Yeah. Yeah, you've had it. And if you ever, what happens when you get super hungry and you haven't eaten? You think you're in a very good mood? No. No, no, we get what we call hangry, right? People get grumpy. Jesus could see all that and think, ooh, we have potential for uh, 5,000 hangry people. We ought to do something about this. Uh, that's exactly right. That's what it means. And so he goes to the disciples and, you know, Philip, he says, oh, we don't have enough money to buy food for all these people. That's, you know, this isn't a buffet line. And then Andrew says, well, I see this kid probably wasn't any older than any of y'all. and He's got two fish. I, I didn't have any fish except for canned tuna. So, you know, we'll pretend these are fish. He had a couple of cans of tuna and some loaves of bread. I got leftover hot dog buns I pulled out of the freezer, right? So this is, this is all the kid had, right? Do you think this is going to feed 5,000 people? 
Now, you think it's going to feed this many people in here? There's like about 80 people. No? Uh, almost 1,500. 1,500? Oh, I wish. It would feed all those people. But it's just not going to go very far. Except in the hands of Jesus. Right? Yeah. We know that when we give all that we have to Jesus, like some fish and some bread, or our gifts, or any good talent we've got, right? I know some of you are so, you're musical and you draw and you're great with math. You do all kinds of wonderful things. When we give that to Jesus, Jesus can multiply it and use it to help all kinds of people, even 5,000 plus. I mean, they said there were 5,000 men, but add all the kids and the women there, there are like 8,000 people. Wow. What, what about Ten hundred and fifty-five people. Yes, Jesus can do that. Jesus takes what we have to offer, even when it might look kind of small. And in the hands of Jesus, it's multiplied and the needs of the people are taken care of. Can you remember that? And that you get to be a part of it. God's work in the world. Well, let's say a prayer together, okay? All right, let's put our hands together. God, thank you for our family, for our friends, for our church. And thank you that you use our gifts. They might seem small to us, but you make them big to take care of the needs of others. So take care of the needs in our community today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I've got a lollipop for you. But you can't eat it till your mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandparent tells you it's time, okay? So when the adult in your life tells you it's time to eat it, you can eat it. But have a great Sunday. We'll see you tomorrow. Kids are amazing. <laughs> you didn't hear him say after he said 10,555 people, that's a lot. <laughs> Speaking of kids, how many volunteers do we have present here that are going to help a vacation Bible school? Stand up, please. How about those that have donated items for vacation Bible school? If you've donated anything, stand up too. We want to thank you because I know without you, this wouldn't be possible this coming week. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is to know that you have invited us to seek you out, to knock on your door and to come in and make our request known to you. We come to you today in praise and thanksgiving, thanking you for receiving our prayers and never being too busy to be bothered by us. You see us all around and you see those things happening in our world, things that are sometimes so stressful, our accounts, our relationships, sometimes our families are even overlooked because of our busyness. It passes for our family lives. And Father, you see even our empty cupboards in our hearts and you love us. You never turn from us because of our inadequacies or our needs. Today we pray for our needs based on what you have told us. This is not that we are not to worry about what we're going to eat or drink because you know our needs and all we need to do is ask in your holy name and we'll receive. Your word tells us these things. So at this moment, in my silence, receive the prayers of your people. Lord, you know these unspoken prayers. You've told us to ask and not to worry. Before you, Father, we acknowledge our physical needs. We ask for food, health, clothing, shelter, work, peace, love, transportation, 
a family that knows you for protection, for good friends, for strength to make godly choices, hope, joy, and perseverance. We ask for enough in your holy name. Our needs will be met and our hearts will be filled. We present these needs to you as an act of worship. We, your people, declare that only you understand the true needs and only you can fulfill them fully. With this wholehearted prayer that we prayed together, now let us pray the Lord's Prayer as one body. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will those helping with the offering today please come forward? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the plans that you have for us. These plans are for our good and your glory. You said, give, and it would be given unto us. For in the same measures as we give, it will be given to us again. We give to you today as a response to your goodness to us. And we ask that you receive our offerings and continue to supply all our needs. May your peace be in our hearts, your grace be in our words, your love be in our hands, and your joy be in our souls. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Put your hand in the hand of the man who still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Every time I look into the holy book, I want to tremble. When I read about the part where the carpenter cleared the temple, for the buyers and the sellers were no different fellas from what I profess to be. And it causes me shame to think we're not the people we should be. So put your hand in the hand of the man who still the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself By putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. My mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. She said there come a time when there'll probably be room in heaven. But I'm feeling kind of guilty about the number of times should do but we forget what he said and we figure that he'll still make room so put your hand in the hand of the man who's still the water 
put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Everybody sing. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Today's reading is from John 6, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they recognized the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said to test him, for he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Please be to God. Have you ever found yourself in a conversation like this? You get in the car, you get strapped in, and one of you says to a friend or a loved one, what are you hungry for? Yeah, you know where this conversation's going. Oh, anything's fine. And then you start rattling off the list, right? Mexican food? No, had that for lunch. Well, what about burgers? Mmm, too greasy. What about um, Italian? No, too heavy. And so you keep going down the list and you finally say, well, but what are you hung hungry for? Oh, anything's fine. Anything's just fine, right? It's not just fine. Let me tell you, next Sunday after VBS and after our wonderful VBS service, I know that y'all are my um, 830 years. You are dedicated 
to 8.30, and I so appreciate that. But maybe you'll do double time at church next Sunday, and you'll come back for the 11 o'clock VBS service. And then maybe, just maybe, I can convince you uh, to stay for lunch afterwards. Bring your lunch money, because we're going to have food trucks here, and we're going to have a big party to celebrate and get to know all of these families uh, that are not a part of our our church family just yet, but we want them to be. We want them to have a church, find a church home right here at Moody. And so we're going to have this food truck party and you can all come and be a part. I hope you're hungry for a food truck party next week. Jesus, well, he knows a lot about hungry people, right? He's have throughout the gospel of John, there are all these instances where Jesus is feeding people. And today's really no difference. The Gospel of John makes Jesus out to a rock star. I mean, the crowds are following him. In just the chapter before, Jesus was healing people in Jerusalem. And now we discover in chapter 6 that they've traveled all the way to the area of Galilee, and the crowds are still following him. They want more of Jesus. They are hungry for Jesus. They are amazed by his signs, his wonders, his miracles. He's healing people and his preaching. It's just spectacular. So they are following him up this mountain. But Jesus is trying to get a little time away, get a little vacation, if you will. That's why if some of you see me uh, wearing a mask around, I'm trying to make myself wear a mask again because we'd like to go on vacation and we're going to have to tests to make sure we don't have COVID. And so, you know, trying to get ready to get a little time away sometimes is a challenge. And for Jesus, it was a challenge because he had all these crowds of people following him. So he sees, they go across the lake and he sees the crowds coming. He's like, maybe they won't go up the mountain. Maybe they'll be too tired. So he goes up on the mountain and in my mind, uh, they kind of make a camp for the day. And then John tells us that it was around the time of the Passover. You need to know that in the Gospel of John, the Passover is mentioned three times. The first time is in chapter 2, when Jesus comes to Jerusalem during the time of the Passover, and he sees the temple filled with all kinds of merchants exploiting the people. So he turns over the table and reminds us that the temple was a place of prayer. This is the second time. When he's about to feed the 5,000. And then the third time will be when Jesus returns to Jerusalem for the last time before crucifixion. The Passover is intended to take us all the way back to the Exodus. To remind us of another great leader that took people on a journey. Jesus is there on a mountainside. It reminds us of the wilderness. How Moses led the people to freedom by the power of God, and then he took him out in the wilderness, and there in the wilderness, God provided in a miraculous way. And once again, God's going to provide in a miraculous way. In my mind's eye, Jesus sees this crowd coming up, and he knows that, uh, he recognizes that basic human need, that people need food. He also recognizes the logistical uh, nightmare it is for just about anybody else. But then he sees the opportunity to share a message that is deep and rich with the people, to show them a sign of the kingdom of God, something deeper than just curing the sick. And I love the disciples' reaction, right? Philip and Andrew, they're just overwhelmed by the moment, you know. Philip says, we don't have enough money to feed all these people. We're not a buffet. And Andrew, he's like, well, all we've got really, you know, just some tuna fish and bread. This isn't going to do anything. We can't feed 5,000 people. They see what they lack. How often do we see what we lack in our lives? We see just a little bit and think God can't do much with this. We lack so much. And yet in the hands of Jesus, it's quite different, isn't it? That's the beauty of the story for us. That Jesus takes the bread and the fish and he blesses it and then he passes it out. And people have enough to eat, more than enough to eat. You can just hear the the crowd saying, oh, I'd like a little bit more of that fish and a little bit more bread. And miraculously, 
There is more than enough, so much so that there are leftovers. You might say, Jesus fan club, well, all their needs are met. It might be tempting for us to read this passage and see Jesus as some sort of savior who acts more like a short order cook. You know, here's the need, I take care of it quickly before you even realize it. But Jesus is more than a short order savior who quenches all our earthly cravings, right? We have a tendency sometimes to to want Jesus our way. And I was thinking about that this weekend. I was thinking about Jesus my way. And my mind went back to a really uh, old commercial. Maybe you'll enjoy a little vintage Burger King this morning. Let's watch the screen. your way. Oh, thanks, Mike. I don't remember that commercial, but I do remember the slogan, right? You know, this competition between McDonald's and Burger King. And Burger King was trying to define themselves by saying, we'll give you what you want and it'll be fast and quick. And how often that's what it's like with Jesus. That's what we want from Jesus. We want us, we want Jesus to fill all of our needs quick, easy, costing us nothing. But here in this passage, what we're reminded of is Jesus is so much more. He's trying to get a clear and distinct message about the coming of the Savior to the people all around him. If we keep reading in this passage, what we'll read is verses 14 and 15. After the people saw that the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king, king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. Perhaps the people were looking for a leader that could offer them a buffet of blessings. And to be honest, we have that tendency as well. We hunger for all kinds of things. And uh, we want financial security and perfect health. And we want great relationships. There's a variety of voids in our lives that we want Jesus to fill for us. We shop for fulfillment like we do in grocery stores. We put a little bit of everything into our basket, even a little bit of Jesus, hoping that Jesus is going to give us what we want. But instead, we are reminded that Jesus gives us what we need. What we need is a savior. What we need is God with us. What we need is a Messiah. Yes, Jesus can take care of our earthly concerns, but what he comes to do is take care of our spiritual need, the need to be saved, the need to be transformed, the need to be in relationship with the God Almighty, the need to cleanse away our sin and free us for joyful obedience. That's what the the liturgy says to us today. What are you hungry for in life? Are you just hungry for for just a moment or two with Jesus? Just fix my problems right here, right now, and I'll go on my happy way? Or is there something stirring deep in your soul? I believe that there was something happening to the crowds. They saw Jesus at work and they wanted more. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't explain it. They didn't have a scientific formula for it. It didn't matter. But they wanted more of Jesus. And they challenge us to want more of Jesus 
in our lives, for a deeper relationship, to move beyond just the, the daily needs to the deep needs of our soul, that God is with us. That God is with us in our darkest moments and at the highest joys of our lives. That God is with us in our questions. God is with us in moments of clear certainty that we cannot explain, but it is true that God loves us, comes to be among us and the person of Jesus, and then poured out his Holy Spirit on us, that we would never be alone, that we would be guided by God's Spirit to be a crowd that is constantly seeking, constantly following, regardless of the external situation, we are constantly seeking to be in relationship with Christ. For the glory of God, amen. If that story of the fish and the loaves brings you back to the communion table, it should. It reminds us of the breaking and the blessing of these gifts. On those final hours of Jesus' life, he did not fail. He did not fail to celebrate the gift of the Passover, this message that God brought throughout history, that God makes a way for us and provides for all our needs. Jesus took the bread, he asked God to bless it, and then he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me every time you gather together. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, he asked God to bless it, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this every time you gather together in my name. Will you pray with me? Mm, the good and faithful God, we are not worthy to come to this table, but you say the word and we will be freed of our sins and we will walk with you faithfully this week. So, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be this gift of grace to the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As those, uh, I want to invite those that are serving communion to come forward. Everyone's invited to come to the Lord's table. This is not a Methodist table. This is God's table. And so just as Jesus fed the multitudes, the multitudes in this room are invited to come. You'll, cup, you'll come down the center aisle, you'll cup your hands, you'll receive a small piece of bread and someone will hand you a small cup of juice. You're welcome to kneel at the rail as long as you like. And then there are small trash cans on the sides so you can leave your cups in and go back to your seat. Uh, if you are someone that needs gluten-free or prepackaged, if you'll let us know, we'll be happy to serve you in that way. Now let us prepare our hearts for communion. in your seat. If you'll just raise your hand, then Bonnie will bring communion to your seat. The table is set. Please come.
time in our service in which we open up the doors and we invite anyone that's been visiting with us for a while to make Moody their church home. If you'd like to come by profession of faith or transfer membership, however God is stirring in your life, we'd love to receive you as a part of our church family. But let's stand and sing together, and if you're moved by the Spirit, then come down during the singing of this final hymn. When a former pastor returns to their uh, 
to a former appointment, their church home. It's always good to recognize them. We have the Reverend Carol Turner with us today. She was an associate pastor when I was a kid. She was my confirmation teacher and certainly is a mentor in my life. We're always glad to have you and your family here with us today. What a joy it is uh, to be in worship with all of you. If you're a visitor here with us, we're especially glad that you're here with us today. I'll be out this door. I'd love to meet you and get to know you. Um, Pray for VBS this week. God is drawing kids to the church, and we're so excited to be a part of their lives. And um, God's going to teach us so much in the laughter and the prayers and the worship and the music. So pray for us as we go on this journey together. Now receive this benediction. Go out with the love of God in your hearts, expecting God to do great things with all of our offerings to the glory of God. Name the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.